Hello everyone and welcome back to Goblin Nation. Hey, today I want to show you that uh, you don't have to use Marplus Dishonor. I've been getting some messages about asking me if it only has to use Marplus Designer. And the answer is no. And not even MetaHuman. You don't have to use MetaHuman to create nice cloth simulation in Unreal Engine. And today I'm going to cover just that. So, to show this, I'm going to just download the character from the Mixamo. Uh, you can see here I'm in Mixamo and I'm going to download something that is, let's now go into animations, let's go to characters and let's download an anonymous character, something very simple that is going to be be much like Manny or um, Quinn from Unreal Engine. And I can see that um, uh, Mannequin is available for download and you see that it's got the character has no clothing, barely, it's pretty much naked, and we're going to use this one. So I'm going to download this, here I'm going to say at the X, T pose, that's fine, we're going to use uh, T pose, and change it to A pose, and we're going to do download. Now you don't have to change it to A pose, but I like bringing it into Unreal. Uh, uh, the same pose as many and Quinn that is default in Unreal Engine. Again, you don't have to. Because now what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to look for clothes and I'm going to download the clothes also from um, Mixamo. And then uh, because it's going to be um, in T pose as well, and because I prefer the A pose, I will have to change the, the shape of it to be a pose. Well, this one doesn't have one of the arms, then I'm pretty sure that this is one mesh. Proud can do this, but um, this is not good clothing. Let's check something else. What about this guy? I think this would be good, and we'll kind of have to delete the faces inside, but I think that could look good um, as clothing. The stone of this one, again, T-Pose FBX, and we have it. Now, we can download the animation. I don't think I, we need to at this point, but we can download from here. Um, we'll just use whatever I have in Unreal already. I'm thinking let's just jump into Maya and see how we progress from there. I'll see you in Maya. Okay, so we're in Maya and as you can see I have our anonymous character imported into the scene. So if I go into shading and I'm just going to do x-ray joints, so I'll see the joints inside the character. And I also have imported uh, a static mesh of many because I do want to make sure that the character is in um, a pose, so I'm gonna do that just to get have him in a pose similar to interesting world. Then let's rotate his lower arms. I think that's gonna be okay. And I can see that the hands themselves can. Let's change this to this to object again and rotate the hand system a little bit. So let's get rid of many. And we have um, our character, which is really cool. Before we do anything else, I want to maybe add the clothes to it and then we'll continue. So let's open up uh, the um, Bremi rig. That's what it's called, the one with the clothes on. As again, I imported many in, and this is what we have with many in the scene. As you can see, many is significantly smaller than our character. That means, as he saw, the anonymous character was exactly pretty much the same size. So that means that those clothes were going to be huge when they import uh, them into the scene or uh, the anonymous character and to fit with this guy. So it's on the problem. Let's go shading, x-ray. I'm really not sure what the CC you guys use. I really love um, Maya. So for that, I will just group the whole rig up and I will just scale it down 
to be approximately the size of many. And of course, we're going to have to tweak it later, uh, as we put it with our character. But for now, I think that would be suffice. Let's just do that and we'll tweak everything together. And what I can't do now, actually, is pretty much the same thing I did with the other character. I will just roughly put this, and we're going to have to tweak later anyways. Let me just put it to the right direction, and then let's select the four arms. And let's make sure that it's like this, even though we, I don't really care about this this area, because we're going to get rid of the, the actual body. We just need the clothes to be fitting, and that's good. So now I'll we'll select these, and we'll go to edit, delete my type, history. So we're getting rid of the, the skin or the skinning or all that stuff. So now I can take this, the two joints and get rid of them. And I will also get rid of the skin. I don't need the hair or the guys. I just want the shoes, the pants, the shorts and the shirt. Now even with these, I'm going to have to do some work on it. And it is, you can see that there are faces inside where the cavity should be as clothes. I want it to be empty. So if I isolate that, I can actually go and select the faces and select the faces here and here. And also, I'll select the faces here. But then I will have to get rid of some selections because I don't want to grow selections on areas that will take care of other faces that we don't want to select because what we're going to do now is delete the faces that we don't want to be part of this clothing now, in fact. So now that we have just the inside faces, oh, I have some here that I need to select. And now I'm going to hold down shift and greater than so it will grow the selection I'll see how many more i can do this is good for the for the um for the sleeves that looks okay unless i can do one more i think that would be okay even in the inside of the the collar that's good. What about here? This is good. So I'm just going to delete those. So I've created cavities or holes in the clothing, and I think that would be okay. Let's get rid of this, and let's now isolate the pants. Let's do it quickly. And it would have the same exact thing. So I'm going to select the faces that I want. Um, I don't need the faces in here, this section. And I'm going to do the same thing with here. And over here and I'm just going to get rid of these these and these so I'm deselecting these guys because when you saw what I need to do I need to delete stuff so I'm just going to do shift and greater than go up to where I want it to go I think this is okay maybe even one more it doesn't really matter because we're not going to see that there is going to be the shirt on top of it that looks okay to me, and let's delete these. There you go. Let's get out of isolation mode, and let's deal with the shoes. Now the shoes, there's two of them. I don't need to treat both of them. I can just treat one. So for that, what I'll do is I'll go into modeling. I'll go into mesh, and I'm going to do separate. Well, now I can basically get rid of one shoe and just deal with this this guy at the inside I don't really need to delete it but um, uh, well we'll do it anyways so shift greater than um, to be one more no I think this is fine let's delete it let's see if it looks okay for us and I think it does Six, seven, there you go. That's good for me.
that's good for me. I'm not going to duplicate this yet because of what happens is I'm going to have to see if there's any changes that I need to do once we put the character in. And then if there is, then it's going to be um, better to do it on one shoe and then duplicate that to the other side, mirror it to the other side. I'm going to select these. I'm going to do edit, delete by type, history, so it's clean. And I'm going to export that and import that into our character. Let's do that. Let's select them. And let's import it, export them, and export selection, and SFBX. I'll see you in uh, the anonymous character with this guy in there. And there we are. So we have our character, we have our anonymous character, and we have the clothes that do not really fit at the moment. But it's okay, we're going to fix it. But you can see that the A, the a pose has show potential. So let me get rid of the joints so we're not going to select anything. It would be the same if I just selected this so we will not select our joints but that's okay I like hiding stuff away so from what I'm seeing um, it feels to me like pants or the shorts would probably be a little bit it could be that it's the whole thing could be a little bit smaller the shoe seems to be okay of course it's going to be tweaked a little bit but it feels to me like, let's if I scale it down a little bit, I wonder if it's going to be still okay because the shoulders seem a little bit too high up or maybe too big. The rest of it we can tweak and it feels to me like this is better. This feels a little bit better. And I can take them. But that the shorts will fit better. That's not bad. Okay. continue nice so in order to fix this I'm going to the vertices select the vertices just select the random point here and I'm going to hit B so I have like soft select and now it will have it will maintain the shape but it also what it does it, it has a drop off so that you can move things around here it could be a little bit too much, so we'll just take it and you don't really sculpt it, but in a way you pull things with the shape of your element. And you can see the drop off when I hit the, hold down the B button on the keyboard and see what I'm doing. And I'm pulling things up, down, sideways. I'm holding down the B and just getting, eliminating a little bit of the, the drop off. So it's not going to affect so much, uh, so much area, but it will give us still a nice result. Um, as you can see, and it maintains everything. It keeps the shape and it keeps uh, the detail of the the mesh see what the the wrinkles are now we need to do something with the sleeve so I will just select vertices and I will select maybe a little bit more I will select the whole row here now I'll just move it and I will just be Let's move it a bit okay here lower here move it around play with it until you are satisfied with the way it looks and the way it feels. So I'm going to do the same thing uh, with this sleeve. Press B and let's select this area. I'll move it around until we see the sleeve from the other side. 
is here. Like here. Move it. Ooh, look at the shorts. The shorts need some love as well. So I'm going to do the same thing. Or the C's, select this and move it so that we will not see the leg poking through the pants. Some stuff here. What about the shoe? So in a way, what we could do as well is you can we can select bases that say bases off of the, the foot. If we don't want to keep the feet there. I mean, we can distort the, the shape or tweak the shape of the shoe, but we did with the other stuff by just pulling our uh, vertices with the fallout. Or, alternatively, what we could do is basically give the, the foot a different color. We've done it before in Unreal. Uh, they can see also that maybe the shoe can be a little bit more to the back here, which would work as well. It could work. What I will do is I will select this part and maybe pull it back just a little bit so it kind of matches with the foot better or with the ankle better. Just kind of move it around. Yeah, I think that that's what I'll do. So bear with me, guys. This is something that we can do. Um, and I think that what would be nice to do here is maybe even paint the inside of what we don't see and give it a different shader that way if we put the clothes in a separate layer and i'm going to call it clothes you know just to that so we'll know exactly the way it stands so now we'll, we'll open up the shader that's, I mean, the re in the shader, in the output shade, let's create a thing. shader called Lambert, and I'll call it Frenerin. Everent. So what I'll do, I will select the faces over character that will be behind clothing and will make it transparent so we will not see it in engine and what that will do is it will it will pretty much promise us uh, a smooth simulation in terms of what visuals sometimes when we are simulating object we might have not like what you just saw we might have uh, i know that the simulation should be perfect but sometimes it doesn't give us that perfect vision vision that we want because at the end of the day it is being simulated in real time and uh, if the collision object is, uh, but there's a visual frame or there's something happening with your animation, you will see a skink poking into the cloth. And some we want to avoid that thing. We want to make it easier on the engine as well. So what I'll do is I will make it easier by selecting the faces that we might not want. And I will uh, give it a transparent shader. Uh, it doesn't really matter because the actual animation would work really nice. So I will do just that. So what we can do is start selecting the faces that we don't want or that we want to give it different shader. Let's do that. Uh, faces, uh, let's get rid of the fall off. I'll select this and we'll do the same thing on this side. Shift greater than. Just make sure that we're not going too far down. Give me one more. I mean, this is something that could be tweaked later. Let me take it one less so that we have a little bit more space here. Let's give it a transparent shader, but right click and assign material to selection. So you can see that on character, has all this area and it is uh, basically a uh, different shader than what it we have in the actual model. I can do the same thing with the rest of the pelvis or the rest of the the body. Good. It's a bit more. 
you to be careful to not get to the chesser because it is revealed. Well, let's do up to here and let's give it the same shader. Line. Leave here is fine and we can do this area, but let's, uh, let's not do it as of now and see how it looks like. There you go. It looks like it's got clothes, even though he does not. If I bring in the clothes back, there you go. We have our character. So now, but what? Oh, wait a minute. We didn't do uh, the feet. Let's do the feet. Base. Let's select these faces. Let's select the same thing on this side. Dun, dun. Lift greater than. Let's want all the way up. I just want to make sure that the, f the toes are selected right. And I will basically get rid of its faces. Here. But that looks good, and I'll give it the same shader, the transparent shader. Transparent, do you see it here? Transparent, assigned. Okay. Nice. Just to make sure that everything is clean, and this all shader is going to be transparent in engine. Now before we export anything, let's select the shoes. Let's get it out of reference. Select the shoe. These are the shoe. This is a shoe. Let's mirror the shoe. Let's do a mirror. Edit. Yeah. Edit by type. District. So we have the, the the shorts, the shoes, and the shirt. If I select the tops, the bottoms, and the shoes, and I can see, I want to check their UV map. So if I go into UV, UV editor, and I can see here that because they've separated, and also I think that's how it was from the get-go, usually in games you will have, you see that there's a the, the UV texture or the UV map is from 0 to 1. It's, it contains um, the, the, sh the texture of our, of our snorts in this case, and it's in the whole area of the map. It goes from 0 to 1, 0 to 1. Usually in games, if you select the clothing, it will be probably one mesh that is the whole clothing area, and all of that would fit in the this frigid. So you will have area for the pants right here, area for the shoes right here, and it's all going to be one big texture. In this case, what I see that it's they have Mixamo has the the shirt on its own, the shorts on their own, and of course the shoes on their own. So what that tells me is that I don't want to combine them into one mesh in kitten. In fact, what we're going to do is when we import into Unreal, we will import them as one mesh. Before we export them finally into Unreal, I need to make sure that you do something because it comes from a, a third party website like Mixamo, or if it comes from a different website like Hardstation or whatever it is that is not uh, Marvel's designer, or if it's not something that you've created yourself, there's a uh, one thing that you need to make sure that it doesn't have, which is broken mesh, which means that, that if there are faces that are more than the face, um, aged faces, um, sometimes you can have faces that have five edges or three is fine triangle because it, we're gonna, it's going to triangulate anyway for Unreal. But if we want to make sure that there are no extra vertices or extra things that my um, Unreal Ended will not be able to 
then simulate, we need to make sure that everything works perfectly. So I will select the shirt and I will go into mesh and then I'm going to go into cleanup right here and I'm going to select as much as I can poor sided faces so if it's more than poor sided it's going to fix it for us or it's going to show us where it is so I'm making sure that things are non planned and our faces stuff that could cause a problem and I'm going to do apply so you can see that it triangulated the whole mesh which is fine um, sometimes now if I do s uh, smooth for example you'll see that it's going to be a little bit denser uh, which would look nice, um, but it could be a little bit resource heavy. Um, we can try it. We can try and see what it does. Now, hopefully, it's going to run smooth. But let's see. Do the same thing with the pants. Let's check that it's had no issues. And let's check it with the shoes as well. Clean that. So it tri triangulates it. Only the shirt right now is smooth. I don't have to use this mode. I can get rid of that node. Let's do it that way. Let's uh, smooth the pen, the, the shorts as well. Let's just see how it looks. And then the shoes don't have to smooth. Um, we don't have to smooth them. But let's save this file. I can go back to it and basically get rid of the smooth if need be. If I want to add animation to characters, I think we've dealt with it in a different video already and I want to retarget stuff. I, I want to make sure that the skeleton will fit exactly what many, uh, like many or like Quinn, stuff that would fit perfectly in Unreal Engine. For that, uh, what I'm using is Advanced Skeleton. So I'm going to select Advanced Skeleton um, and I'm going to go into Joints. I'm going to select the main joint and the two things that I'm using right now in Advanced Skeletons are Name Matcher. And it should populate for me because that I have a joint selected. If I do detect from selection, it should show me Mixamo rig. It knows that it's from Mixamo rig. And now I will do to check out. We'll give you some um, information once I do create place skeleton. You will see that it does it on half of the body. Or well, it kind of shows us, hey, this is the chest here and a shoulder, hand, put and pelvis and all that stuff. Here I think it's got some issue with the head end and the eye, which is fine. I'm, we're not going to use that anyways for now. And then after I did the create place, let's do show pull vectors. We'll see that it works. It seems okay to me. Now sometimes if I do straighten vectors, it will take the, the knee, it will take it over the center line. And I don't want that, so I'm going to keep it that way. And then I'm going to do Build Advanced Skeleton. So what it does, it will create a rig for us so that we can animate that palm in Maya. But because we're taking it into Unreal, uh, I'm going to need to do just one more step. So we have a rig already done, already set. This is an amazing, amazing script. Now, I will do constraints to joints, which means it will take the joints that we have and will constrain it to what we need with the uh, advanced rig, uh, advanced colors and it's created. Constraint to joints, he did it for us. So now basically what I put to do is if I select the controller and you see that if I move, you'll see that our character moves perfectly. As you remember, Mixamo does not come with a full rig. I mean, it comes with joints, but the rig is not really, um, doesn't have controllers. And here we have all of them. So now we did with the name matcher, created, we finished it. But what we're going to have to do now is basically select what we want and export that. But before that, let's do mannequin export. And we're going to choose many Unreal Engine 5, it is Medican, High Nine Engine 4. Do not check that. I'm going to choose many Unreal Engine 5. Or I can choose Quinn. It doesn't really matter because they all share the same. When it's uh, Unreal Engine 5, it's, on, it's going to share the same joints names and going to create the same joints for us. I'm going to do OK. And I'm going to call it Aaron Rig Unreal Engine. And I'm going to save. Very nice. Let me save this file. Ipsing Pez, just to make sure that we have it all. I'm going to call it Anon Lords. And that's it, guys. We can now 
close the advanced skeleton and we can now go and put it all in Unreal and do some simulation. Let's see you in Unreal Engine. There you go guys. So we're in Unreal Engine. Let's uh, have some clean up. So let's create a an un a folder and unreg. Let's create another one and call it clothes and inside let's import the clothing clothes on our engine and here i want to make sure that it's right here combined meshes is on so i'll make sure that it's on and that's it make sure that it's combined and do import all now if i double click open the asset we can see that the it doesn't show us just the shirt or just the shorts or just the shoes it actually has all the clothes together and as you can see i need to make sure that it is shown in both in both sides so i want to do two-sided turn it on and i want to save this close this one double click on this shader make sure that it's double-sided close it and you can see that it fills up if i look inside the shorts we can see the inside and i'll do the same thing with the shoes even though it doesn't really matter but let's do it and save okay you don't have to do this we can save this it doesn't really matter and let's uh, clear it up a bit so i'll create a folder and I'll call it material And I will put the materials in there. Move up here. And create another folder and I'll call it textures. Maybe they're all textures that came directly from Mixamo with the character and it's got normal maps, it's got everything and it's really clean and very nice. What else do I want? Oh I want the Axel Rig. Rig. Pull in and let's import our and on rig unreal engine round tick let's import character here we go so we have our character imported in and you can see the joints you can see the skeleton that it comes in with it comes in with many skeleton you can remember that it always has more joints and you can see the the pelvis area it's got beautiful joints just like many would have and that is exactly what we need. So I'm going to do here the same thing. Create material folder. Let's put both the materials in there. Up here. I give folder and put textures folder. And let's put all these inside here. Cool. If I bring in the sculpted mesh, so this is our, this is going to be our origin. Okay, let's do well, 100, but 540. Okay, let's drag this here, give it the same size, 1200 by 440. And we have a cloth. Very cool. What do we have to do now, guys? All we have to do, we have our rig and we have our cloth and we need to create our cloth simulation. And that means that we need to create our cloth node. And today we're going to do something completely different. We're not going to use the collisions that um, Unreal Engine gives us. Instead, we're going to use what they call kinematic collider, which basically it takes the shape of our character's body and that is what it's going to collide with which is basically what happens when we wear our own clothes so we're not going to be spheres or um, other shapes like box for the chest or anything that would look weird like uh, this that happened last time we played with it don't let me wrong it was fun it was funny but we need something that is more but uh, we want to see in production and in simulation. And here, we need to create our cloth. So if I right click and I go into physics, cloth asset, and I'll call it, and then 
rig, and that's open at night for a member. It's 5.4. It gives us all this beauty, and we we've dealt with this. We've dealt with this in a different tutorial, but for now, I want to create it fresh. So what I'll do is, I just delete everything in this script. So we are zero. There's nothing. And I'll go and say bold. And in, in fact, now that we have the character in, we haven't saved it. So let's save current level and actually make sure that we are on track. So we created the Anum Rig asset and the data flow. And that's what we need. So now let's do it what, one step at a time. What we need is we need to import the static mesh. So I'm going to start by typing static mesh import right here. Now we need to give it the cloth that we have. We have already imported the cloth in. So if I scale this a little bit down here, now that we're in cloth, hold this, either press on this arrow or I can basically drag this over here. So our cloth is imported into Unreal. It's right here and it's in our static mesh. The thing is, I need another thing and I need a collider. So if I create another one, static mesh import, this is going to be the collider. Now for the collider, we need the static mesh for it. To create the kinematics of a collision, I want to make sure that we have the exact shape so I'll go into Maya and I will export this Anon rig shape and that will going to be our collider. So in Maya, this is our collider. Let's just make sure that it's named collider. So it comes with texture, of course. We don't have to use the texture. We can just use a, a normal Lambert because we don't want it to bring in um, just the shaders as well or materials and textures. So we'll just use that. And I'm going to export this into the same spot and we are in Unreal, and that's open our cloths. Here we can import our collider. So in in cloth, let's import import the collider. Called it Kine Collider, and it should give us this, which is fine. It's just one. Let's do import and just one material, so that's fine. Put it in material, move here, and we have our collider right here. If I double click on it, this is what the asset looks like. So we have the collider, which should give us the right result for the kinematic collider. Okay, so we have it. Let's select this because that's going to be the kinematic collider and drag right this here. So now that we have the collider and the cloth, let's add transfer codes. We need to transfer the skin weights. So let's do transfer skin weights. Here, we need to make sure that we have the Anon rig, Unreal. That's the rig that we exported from Maya. And make sure that it is in simulation mesh and in paint weights. And we're going to do the same thing with the collider. But the collider will be a little bit different. We'll do transfer can wait. We're going to give it the same one, an unrigged Unreal Engine. That's the, again, that's the FBX that we have translated that we had exported from Maya. So we had these two, but this transference skin weights on the collider should be, instead of simulation mesh, it could be skeletal mesh. There you go. Know. And instead of in paint, let's change it to closest point on surface. So it's going to use a little bit different method to have the um, the paid weights going to transfer up the weights going into the mesh. Now, for the skin weights, as you can see here, we can give it select and we'll let it know what we want to be affected or affecting a cloth. So we can drag select like this. So everything that is yellow, the cloth will be colliding on top of this. We can do just selections. Um, no, we can, with the shifts, the holding shift, you can select whatever you want. 
but you will, or you can basically go and do select all so the whole carrier will be colliding or a collision object for the cloth that's a kind of cool thing that we can do now with unreal so it's not like we have a, a sphere for the shoulders and box for the chest you can really have you, you, you can limit it so that it will be easier on your machine um, but uh, let's do let's say the cloth let's say it will not have cloth object or collision object as the sheen or the, the, f the feet or whatever it is we just want to make sure that these areas will be affected that we don't even need the head right we don't need the head to be selected so with control I'm holding down control now and I'm just dragging where the head is because the collar is something like this so we don't really of course we can go back and change it whenever we want to let's do this let's accept it and created a node called selection now here it's called sim face let's change the secondary group to sim face as well right. sim faces call it Hine my tech bases elected that's good now for the cloth we also need to paint it for this let's add a white map and this is what happens so you can see that compared to our selection here which is basically the yellow areas now we need to also tell Unreal which parts are actually cloth and which parts are not and we remember that the shoes we don't want them to be cloth so what I'll do is after pressing on the add weight map it created our node so now it will go down here and I will do flood filled current so everything will be kind of grayish white color but we don't want the shoes to be so I will climb up and I will go it's in brush and it's in paint and here I will take the attribute value and will change it to zero and now well, I can make be maybe even have the brush size a little bit wider and I will just paint black where the shoes are so that the shoes will not be affected by the simulation as cloth it will just take the skin weights from the rig and unrig that we just told it to use as transfer skin weights so this looks fine with me another thing that I would do usually we can see it after when when we start simulating but another thing that I would do is perhaps have the the top of the shorts um, not being affected with the simulation that way it the pants will not penetrate to the shirt so in order to do that because it's one mesh what I can do is I can scroll down and you see all these these are all the elements of what we have here so if I select one thing you can see that I'm just checking this so it's the back of the shirt and here if I select this it's the front of the shirts if I go down in on the list this is the sleeve and this is another sleeve and now we we'll start seeing these parts now are going to be basically all everything that is the pants now, until we get to the shoes so if I deselect these because I don't want them to be it's part of uh, everything now what I'll do is I will just select check everything up but it, it brings up all the little little things that we have on the shores even though we don't see them but they're there so I could have deleted them from the actual mesh itself before exporting but we didn't do that so now we're gonna have to reveal all of them and then slowly uh, paint over them now uh, with black until we are satisfied with what we want to achieve so here is the pans um, let's see what else we can vent out and we will not paint everything just the top part of the the shorts that the other the shoes so we don't really need to see them this is what we need to um, deal with so maybe it says I can now scroll up and maybe make the diameter of the brush a little bit smaller and let's 
repeat this lack so it will not be affected by the simulation. Kind of like the shoes, what we just did with the shoes. I mean, we can, you know, you can go back and forth with it. Even after the simulation started, you can come back to it and fix it and tweak it and repaint until you're satisfied with what you want to achieve. So if I go down now, and I will bring back the shirt, so I can see uh, if I'm okay with it or not. So I can see that maybe I can exaggerate this and we can also smooth it to remember that we can smooth those things. So we'll do that right after. This is number is I'm not affecting the shirt itself. So if I want to smooth it, I will go up instead of paint, I'll change it to smooth and I will start just tapping on the left mouse button and it smooth the edges so it will be a little bit more tolerable visually. Good. We might need to tweak it a little bit more once the simulation starts and I will do accept. So now if I press on this again, we'll see our map. We can kind of also maybe give this a little bit more in black, but let's, let's continue with the, the script of our um, plus. Good. So now that we have all this, we can move on and we need to somehow, somehow merge these things together. So I will drag here and we'll say merge cloth collection. And this is what we get. Now we have uh, an arrow here going into the collections, but we also need to connect this somehow. So how do we do that? We're going to go here, we'll right click on that, and we're going to add option pin. So we've added another one. And there you go. We can now drag this and collect and connect it to the collection one. So this node will connect both the collision object, which is our friend here. And it will also connect our cloth object together. So we have both of them right here. Now that you have all both of them connect connected, now we can add the simulation attributes, the simulation nodes. So I'm going to drag again. And I'm going to go simulation default config. I don't know. It will affect both those things. And here we have the density. Remember that we dealt with those things. And we're going to go into the options later. So if we have that, it's on density. If it's fine, that's what we need. Now we need to create another one. And we'll call it an axe. Okay. And it's going to be simulation max distance config. That's the node that we need for now. And you can see the low width OK, low width 0. That's good. That's what we need for now. With the max distance config, we need to connect now something else into it. We need to connect the distance from the collision. We need to connect it to the uh, cloth that we have. And with this, we're going to need to use the name. So if I take the name, which is the purple, and we'll connect it to the max distance. And that's what we need to do. And you can see that it's called max distance. So I will take the name, control C, and I will come here, and I will give this, control V, the same name. And I will accept it. So now these two are connected. So the max distance here will be the node that is connected to the cloth that we have already painted the weights for. Let's move on. That's one thing. Continue with the collection. Now we need to add simulation self-collision. So if I start typing self-collision, simulation self-collision config, it's going to be a little bit bigger node. There, we go. there it is. Now we need to connect some things to it. And the things we need to connect, we need to connect the cloth, which is from the same thing from the name. I'm going to drag this to the self-collision thickness, which you can see here. And we also need to connect it to the self-collision kinematic collider, which is our frame in the bottom there. So I'm going to see from the same node, from the same purple node over pink node, I'm going to select this. And now we also need the self-collision enabled kinematic faces string value. Now, if you remember, the self-collision kinematic one is right here. So I'm going to select this and going to connect this to our third element of the node. That's good. That's nice. So we have 
from this one, it connects to the max distance, and it also connects two more to the simulation self-collision config. And now from here, let's drag this, and we'll add what we like, which is the wind. So if I type in aero simulation aerodynamic, which is nice, and of course, we need to somehow finish this. So take it here, type in terminal, cloth asset terminal. And it creates the evaluation. We haven't saved, and I think we should. And look what we have here. That looks painful to me. We'll fix all this stuff. But you can see that there is already simulation starting, and the shirt falls right to the ground. If I reset it, we've seen. Let's put in Hawkeye on rig. Uh, we cool. Let's save this. Okay, so let's go back and see what the skin weights that we, of course we can if I now take this and I'm going to go to paint and it was just a but I paint here and do accept let's see what it does we'll see if it drapes if it doesn't even consider the face okay well we have something like this but with something in the settings of the cloth that we need to to manipulate. Well, let's freeze it and let's reset. And now if I want, I do want to keep this white, so I will take this to one again. Hey. I want to see how it would look without um, restricting restricting the, the, the pins on what it's colliding with, or considered as cloth. And now we can add some attributes to our cloth by tweaking, tweaking some numbers, and that's, that's a t more time-consuming thing, um, but we'll deal with it um, slowly. We should take your time and, and, and fixing all those things. So it's simulation default config. Let's do density to 0 0.2 and see what it looks like. You can see that it's, uh, it's it behaving a little bit differently. L0, edge stiffness, tether stiffness, let's change it to 0 and 1. That is scale 0 and 1. This to 0 0.1. Who actually the thickness? It's on 1 right now. And let's keep it 1. Friction, let's change the friction to 0 and see what it does. You can see that the pans are really getting to stretch, but it's it keeps itself on the top there. Okay, then we can always play with the friction and him drive and him drive stiffness. Let's give it 0 0.7. See what it does. But you can see that when I simulate it, it is not moving the same way. Let's give it 0 0.5. Ooh, then it becomes rubbery. But you can see that it, it collides pretty well with the coll collision. Let's put it 0 0.7. Oh. And the damping, let's do it at 0 0.5. In Tay, let's save this for now. But let's add some arrow wind to it. Let's do N. See if it affects it. You can see that it's all shifted, right? Uh, if I do on the um, Z, let's do 20. Okay, so you can see that it is affecting it. And of course, you can see that there's wind affecting it going up which is kind of fine. Now all this we will not see, remember, because we're going to have transparent tra shader on it. So that's cool. So I'm, I'm going to leave this. Let's give this a little bit higher number. Oh, there you go. Um, and let's reset the simulation. Um, 
about is interesting. Of course, it's a very strong wind. Hey, so let's, I, I like to exaggerate, to be honest, and then tone back things uh, as I need them. So let's go back to simulation default, beginner point two. So I think it's that damping, 0.77 that we had, the anim drive stiffness. Let's do all the five again, just to see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. It really gets destroyed. Hang on, there's a cloth. Sex. We just need to find the, the, the sweet spot of your simulation. So we don't want it to be too loose um, because we do want to have it a little bit more realistic looking or a little bit more convincing looking. And in draft stiffness, okay, it's, it's, it's mild, but it's not that bad. Now, here, the iteration count and the iteration um, uh, subdivision count. So here, I would like to put four. The subdivision count, I will put probably three. And the max iteration count, change it to seven. Start with that and see what it gives you. You can see that it did change the quality of the simulation. Let's change the damping or the damping. Okay, let's take it back to 0 0.1. It's not going to be as stiff, or it's we're not going to be really considering this the the wind or the the air. You know, we cooks in the back. That's not bad. Good. I mean, you can you can spend so much time tweaking the numbers as long as you have the right collision. I think you can do. You can really, really spend a lot of time. Let's go to the self-collision and tweak some numbers here. Self collide against kinematic collision. Let's turn this to on. And then we should have self-collide against all kinematic vertices. Let's try to turn this to on. And that's it. The arrow is here. Um, it's too... Can if we change it to higher? Yeah, that's not bad. You can see that there's more wind happening and it actually collides pretty well. I'm happy with that for now, so let's save this, save all. And let's get out of this. Nice, so now we have that, we have that, so we don't really need this object in the scene. So, is it closed, so let's delete that and we have um, this. <laughs> so if I select it, and uh, we will go into it and see what we can do. What I can do is I can go into our, our rig and the F the rig and go into the material. And now I want to create a new material. It's to create a new material because that's the transparency that we want. So we'll let's call it transparent matte. And let's go into it. All we need to do is just get rid of the roughness. Yeah, let's get rid of the specular. And in the actual mat, we'd set off default lid in opaque. I can change this to mask. And in mask, I need to opacity, change it to zero. And there you go, it's transparent. So I will save this. So don't forget to change this to mask from opaque, change it to mask. Save it when you change it to zero. And now you see that the transparent that we get it in Maya, which is the white area. So what I need to do is just drag this on top. This is the new material that we created. And now it will all disappear from our eyes. So we don't see these things. So once we have animation, we will not have penetrations to the cloth. Now we could have we could have deleted or we could have given these faces as well and where the shoulders are but it's fine we just want to test to see that everything works nice so we have the cloth right we have the cloth work. we need to make sure that we give it to our anon rig 
some to do that we covered this in different video and to do this we select the rig this is the the, the skeleton mesh rig head and i will type in cloth and we had the cloth component and here i will go, go down here on the list uh, and the cloth asset it will go and rig cloth asset and choose this and it should populate here right now so we have our cloth on the rig and if i move our character you can see that the cloth moves with it and we could uh, actually we could simulate right here remember usually it goes to the um selected the viewport but we change it to simulate usually because it, it, it it's uh, it's more applicable to what we need to test to test with the uh, the cloth but for here i will check the cloth uh, chaos cloth right here and i will simulate in editor i will check this to on before i do so let's save everything because i don't want anything to crash and i will check this to on and now because we have wind in there you can see that the simulation is working and the collision is working as well so the kinetic collision or the kinematic collision is actually working not bad and that's it all we need to do is add some animation to it and i will do it with you right now so anon rig let's uh, create another folder and i will call it read target so now we need some animation. We don't have any animation on here, but we do have control rig, characters, mannequins. Well, then we have animations here. We have many. Do we have a walk? We have a run. We have the jump and we have a walk. A walk forward, there you go. This is good. That's great. Now we can right click in 5.4. We can select an animation right click remember we covered this in the 5.4 preview and let's do retarget animations so this is going to be the source and our target is going to be an rig because we have exported the rig to be many unreal engine 5 it's easier for us to retarget in a click of a button so now if for animation let's do walk forward And it seems like it's working really nice. Okay. Let's export the the asset. Let's go and team power anon rig. We target and we'll save it there. So we target, we have it here. If we want to, we can now select animation. Let's go to asset browser. Let's do walk. Walk forward. Okay. At export selected, we'll put it in um, the same place. So if we go into Anon Grig, in we target export uh, overwrite. There's nothing to overwrite, and let's do a run. And let's export this to the same spot. Export, export. Okay. Now we have a run, and we have a walk. We need to check it. We need to check this thing. So let's go to Iron Rig and let's create a cinematic level sequencer. We'll call it Anon Box. Let's add our character in. Head. Take a go. And for the animation, we can add can add run we should see our character there it is let's move it a bit and let's start with a walk first let's do walk I'd like to identify our character there it is so let's take something like this and let's bring them together so it's going to be informal walk. It's going to start running. Ready. 
I mean, we can tweak this. I mean, for example, you can see that it's walking, and then it takes the foot back. What if we make sure that this part of the run gets there when we want it to? So if I kick this a little bit here, just to tweak it a bit so it will not be too rough, um, the transition will not be too rough. And let's smooth the transition a little bit, take it a little bit to be more all of, all of it. Okay, let's give it this, this time and let's try now that we have it and we can choose the chaos cloth and give it the simulation. Press on the simulation button here, and we'll see how it looks like when it is in animation. We, and we see that the sleeves are kind of difficult for it, and then yeah, it's very very rough. But it is something that we can tweak in the the cloth the simulation attribute. Let's say, let's save this. Let's add time dilation and kind of slow it down just to see how it looks like. If it's like that because of the simulation, if it's something that could be avoid, avoided somehow. Simulate. You know, with all the forces of the wind that are kind of tough, you can see that with the cloth it actually does a really nice job but it could be that we need to add some damping and it could be that it's too loose in some areas or maybe we can we can restrict the way it slides on the the shoulders here but overall I think that it does a really good job for what we need for now it really is just to you know go around and play with it play with the numbers get to the right numbers that you want to have on your simulation. I think that it really is uh, a nice way with Kinecolide, Kine which you don't have any weird shapes. It really takes the, sh the shape of the body of the rig, which is really, really cool, I think. Let's change some lighting see what we can have that is really satisfying. Here you go guys. Chaos cloth with kinecoloid and an object that is not Marvel's designer but it's just an FBX file from Mixamo. The character is also from Mixamo. It's not MetaHuman. Of course it would work with MetaHuman and we've played with MetaHuman before. But here you can see that the, it, it, we can really play with it and come up with ideas and come up with nice cloths and um, I think that what I'm trying to do now I'm trying to play around with caching it so that we can do a nice simulation of cloth and then cache it to the mesh itself so we don't need to simulate it every time and uh, once I get it to work the way I want it to work I will create a video for you guys so that will be all for tonight and uh, honestly guys if you haven't subscribed, please do so and uh, hit subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. And until the next time, Codename Mason.